Welcome to our lectern line. Our next example, well, by the title it indicates that this is path dependent instead of path independent. What has changed? Well, we went back to going from 0, 0 to 1, 1 along a linear path, y equals x, and a parabolic path, uh, y equals x squared. And so remember, a couple videos ago, it was path independent, but the difference is that our vector field is yi minus xj instead of yi plus xj. So changing this, minus, this plus to a minus, well, would seem to indicate by the title that now we're going to see a difference in the result when we evaluate the line integral of our vector field dot dr. Let's go ahead and work it out to verify that that's indeed the case. So for path one, this integral right here is going to be equal to, and we're going to evaluate, notice that we're going to use the parametric equations for the line y equals x, x equals t, y equals t, t goes from 0 to 1, and therefore dx and dy are both equal to dt. So the function now becomes as follows, y is equal to t, so we get t in the i direction minus t in the j direction, and we're going to do the dot product with dr. dr is going to consist of dx and dy and the i in the j direction, Con convert to dt, so this becomes, well, let's see here, we're going to factor out a dt, so that would be i plus j times dt. And when we do the dot product, notice we have a plus here because this is dr. And r, let's write r down, r is going to be equal to x in the i direction plus y in the j direction and of course x and y are going to be replaced by t and when we take the dr then this is going to be equal to dx in the i direction plus d the uh, y in the j direction and then dx and dy are replaced by dt and therefore we end up with this as our dr so when we're going to integrate this, we first need to multiply this together. So this becomes equal to, and of course the limits of integration are the limits of t. And so this becomes 1 times t, so this is from 0 to 1. So this becomes t minus t times dt, which is equal to 0 times the integral of t from 0 to 1 dt. So it doesn't matter what this integral is equal to, since we multiply times 0, this is equal to 0. So that means that that line integral is equal to 0. Now let's take path number 2. And so this becomes the integral. And now notice that we're going to use two different parametric equations. x becomes t and y becomes t squared. We plug that in for y and x right there. So this is from 0 to 1 because we're integrating over the t limits. y is going to be t squared in the i direction minus x, which is going to be t in the j direction. And then we multiply this via dot product with dr. Now dr is going to consist of dx and dy, which is dt and 2t dt. So this is 1 times i plus 2t times j times dt. When we multiply this together, the i's and the j's drop out, we end up with the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 times t squared minus 2t times t squared times dt. So 1 minus 2, that's equal to a minus 1 times t squared dt from 0 to 1, which is equal to minus 1 times t cubed over 3, evaluated from 0 to 1. When we plug in the lower limit, we get 0. Plug in the upper limit, we get 1 third times a negative 1, which is a negative 1 third. And notice that the two results are not the same. We took two different paths, we got two different answers. Therefore, this was path dependent, because depending upon what path I take, I'm going to get a different result. It didn't have to do with the paths because they were the same as the ones we showed you a couple videos ago, but the difference was here in the equation describing the vector field. Something about the vector field either allows you to do integration from point A to point B along any path and get the same result, therefore path independent, and something about that vector field causes, in this case, it to be path dependent because I took two different paths and I got 
do different answers. At least, now we understand what we mean by path dependent and path independent, and we can see there's examples where it seems to have something to do with the vector field. Now let's go explore some more and really get to the bottom of what we mean by path dependence and independence in terms of what does it mean for the vector field? What do we have to have there in order to have either the dependence or independence of the path? And that's how we figure these things out.